Good morning, you're watching the Channel and Breakfast Show on Friday the 8th of May. I'm Michelle Eagleton. And I'm Phil Tro, and we have both filled in our Euro Millions tickets this morning. £110 million. Pounds. What are you going to do with yours? Well, I have this bizarre idea that I've always had. It's kind of a dream of mine that to buy the Library Theatre, not that I don't even think you can do that, but if I had the money, I'd buy the Library Theatre, turn it in to a great big nightclub come restaurant called Glitterati. And the top floor, you know, where you can see out, you know, like a dome like yeah. you'd see the stars so you'd have your, your meal underneath the stars <laughs> I've marked you know I've got the idea all copyrighted so don't think you can steal it because when I do win the euro millions millions tonight that's it it's mine I might in that case buy the Dutch pancake house as was and turns it into like Phil's flippers or something and reopen pancakes so when people finish with your place they can come to mine for pancakes sounds like a brilliant, brilliant. Plan, that one anyway we need a lot less than 110 million you know to do this <laughs> absolutely in a few minutes we've got the latest <laughs> news and sports headlines and at 8:45 we've got a cracking live performance from 11 year old singing star from Salford but first up our very own Jude Walsh is here with the latest on the hot tickets in town I can think of nothing worse than an open air theater in Manchester <laughs> <laughs> it would never be open <laughs> Come to my pancake house. Oh, I have one of your flips any day. Thank you. <laughs> uh, right, so lots of tickets on sale at 9 o'clock this morning. I've just passed the queues at the Manchester Evening News Arena for Pearl Jam, one of the hottest bands in the world of the last few years. Tickets go on sale at 9 o'clock this morning for, get ready for this list, the Jonas Brothers, Pearl Jam, Tom Jones, Alicia Dixon and Lady Gaga. It's Lady Gaga. It's uh, a big day for tickets this morning, 9 o'clock. A lot of them not until the summer, some not until October and November, but big gigs in Manchester. Are you, are you sure the queue is out for Tom Jones? <laughs> <laughs> Looking at the people in the queue, I wouldn't have thought so. No 80s ladies, definitely. I'm not keen on the Jonas Brothers, I have to say, out of that lineup. They're a little bit odd. I'm really surprised that they're doing the MEN because, of course, they're massive in America. They're one of the biggest teen bands in America at the moment, but just over here. Mm. They don't seem to have infiltrated, but to play the MEN arena is, uh, is no mean feat. So. Are they like a modern day Hanson? Yes, a little bit. A bit of oom bop. Yeah, and a very big on Christianity as well, which is why they're so big in America and possibly not quite as big over here. But I'm sure the appeal would drip, drip through. Yeah, that's it. Uh, Tom's coming in October, isn't he? And if you're looking for a show, that man can still put one on, can't he? <laughs> oh, yes, absolutely. The hair's growing, he's going grey, he's living up to his roots literally at the moment. But, yeah, he will pack out, he will sell out straight away. No, no doubt about it with Tom, he's still doing it. I've got to say, I actually like some of his new stuff that's been about over the past couple of years, so I think he still can rock it. It's not one of those where you'll go to it thinking, I hope he does all his old classics like Delilah and that. He's got a real catalogue. And he's one of those artists as well where his voice just gets better. A lot of mm. them, it doesn't actually work like that. But with him, his confidence grows and his voice gets better. So there's, there's no bad show with a Tom Jones show. Lady Gaga is here on the 29th of June. What sort of mm. show do you think she'll put on? A lot of PVC, I would have thought, <laughs> Phil. Not your oh, thing at all. Oh, it could be all. hot and sweaty. Well, I don't know. <laughs> You've never seen me on a Friday night. <laughs> Thank the Lord. <laughs> she is a bit crazy, isn't she? But I do like her music. She's, she's got a great couple of tunes in her. She's still got more to come as well with the new album. But, uh, but the image is really interesting but you never hear her speak you never see her in interviews so she's kind of this mystical figure at the moment so it'd be nice to see that break through and come out on stage so that'd be a good gig and tonight we've got Enrique haven't we we certainly have now Enrique I was never that bothered about until I saw him on Loose Women about two months ago and my word he doesn't need to sing a note oh Jude <laughs> he's just been voted the sexiest pop star in the world mm. Mm. I agree I have to <laughs> say Do you think at a Tom Jones concert ladies throw bloomers and at an Enrique, they <laughs> throw frilly <laughs> G-strings. A string. <laughs> yeah. Probably. I mean, he is absolutely gorgeous. And he's had some great songs over the years as well. And the thing is with Enrique, he totally knows the audience that he's singing to. Mm. He always gets at least one lady up for, not a kiss on the cheek, a full-on snog. No really? way. Always. I think he's learning a bit of tricks of the trade off his dad, hasn't he? A bit of a romancer. Uh, do you remember the rumours years ago that his dad had slept with 3,000 ladies? Really? To yeah. all the girls he's loved before. So on account of that, Enrique gives one lady a snog of you bought the first 20 rows. <laughs> it's just going to be you sat there. We'll get ready to book her off, Phil. <laughs> and of course, Alicia Dixon, now she's supporting him. And I think that's like great. It's like a double whammy for anyone who's going to the concert. Huge for her as well. That will be an amazing night tonight. That's Enrique at the MEN Arena. And of course, over on the other side of town, we've got McFly at the Manchester Apollo, the Carmen Apollo, which will be a great gig. They've been together about six years now and uh, still doing well they've not sold much recently but they've had a really good solid few years so that'll be a strong fan base there tonight we were talking about they were in Hollyoaks last night yeah 
doing a little bit of a cameo appearance. Didn't say it. Were they all right? Yeah, it took me right back. Got all nostalgic <laughs> about them. <laughs> I think if there was one out of this lineup that I would probably go and watch, it's Razor Lights. I yeah. love Razor Lights. They're coming to the MEN Arena here a little bit later. Yeah, that's tomorrow. Of course. Uh, tomorrow night. Uh, it's a little bit late. Yeah, <laughs> it is a bit late. That is not. Okay, I should have noticed Alice. when it said Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, Razor Light, of course. They've not done quite so well with this album. And I have to say that the MEN Arena, the tour tomorrow night and the gig tomorrow night is not a sellout, which is unusual for Razor Light. So there are still tickets left if you fancy it and you're thinking, oh, there'll be nothing left. There are some tickets left but again they always put on a good show so uh, mm. tomorrow night will be a good one so if you were to go and join that queue who would you be buying tickets for i am going to raise a light tomorrow night but only because i'm being dragged there by my fella i have to say it's not my favorite i would go and see enrique would you yes <laughs> absolutely and let's hope more than 42 people uh, turn up to the mcfly gig yes <laughs> fingers crossed you never know Ooh. thank you very very Cheers, much dude. Dude. time now for your latest news with headlines with james followed by sport with mike bradley Good morning. These are the top stories this Friday. The row over MPs' expenses is intensifying after one of the papers got hold of details of what 13 members of the Cabinet have claimed for. The receipts show Gordon Brown's paid his own brother for cleaning services. Justice Secretary Jack Straw claimed the full amount for his council tax, even though he got a 50% discount. And Salford MP Hazel Blaze has also been shown to have spent £5,000 on furniture for three homes within 12 months. There's no suggestion any of them have broken the rules, but the rules themselves are being criticised for being too generous. We're expecting post-mortem test results on the body of a policewoman who died in an apparent car crash in Bolton yesterday morning. Claire Howarth was taken to hospital with a serious head injury but died later. Her fiancé, Martin Forshaw, who's also a serving officer, is being questioned on suspicion of murder. Detectives are trying to work out if she'd been killed before the accident. Her colleagues have been paying tribute. I'm here to pay tribute to PC Claire Howarth who died in tragic circumstances overnight. Um, Claire was an exceptional officer who worked here at Rochdale, very well regarded by her colleagues, uh, by her supervisors, and more importantly, by the community themselves. She had the potential to go a lot further within Greater Manchester Police and was already establishing herself as a key member of the team. She had a lot to live for and a lot to go forward to, and it's really, really sad that she's not with us now to fulfill that. A building used as a Sikh temple has been badly damaged by a large fire at Strangeways. Emergency crews got the call to the site on Barker Street in Cheatham Hill at around half past 11 last night. When they got there, the ground and first floors of the building were well alight. 70 firefighters were needed to bring the blaze under control. Investigators are now trying to work out how it started, but it's not being treated as suspicious. A former soldier who was hailed a hero for saving a policeman during the UEFA Cup riots in Manchester last year has been exposed as a liar. It had been claimed the CCTV footage showed Tom Bardsley rescuing PC Mick Regan from rampaging fans. But he's now been convicted of wasting police time after falsely claiming to have rescued a man from Potato Wharf in Castlefield last November. He's been warned he could be jailed when he's sentenced later this month. Large sections of a major route into Manchester city centre are to be closed to all traffic except buses for three months from next week. Oxford Street and Oxford Road are being affected by work to replace the water mains. The route is one of the busiest for buses in Europe. Engineers will shut sections of it in three stages to try to minimise the problems. One of Manchester's major employers wants more bosses to follow its lead and give staff Friday afternoons off. It's an idea they've been trying for several years to cut the number of people pulling sickies, as Kevin Duffy has been finding out. An office full of empty desks doesn't necessarily mean that the credit crunch has taken its toll of yet another company. It might just be a sign of a sympathetic employer. If an idea which has been dreamed up by one local firm catches on elsewhere. Kellogg's in Trafford Park call it summer hours and admin staff get Friday afternoon off if they've done 36.6 hours. It literally is to increase motivation so I think especially in current climate so we have been doing it for six years but current climate when people are feeling you know things are not so great then obviously it gives the opportunity for them to spend more time with friends and family so it's all about increasing our motivation and the feel good factor for working for Kellogg's. Now the company does already have flexible working so it might be viewed as a bit of a publicity stunt but it's food for thought. Could it catch on with other employers?
Um, I think to be able to have a, a one-size-fits-all for all businesses is perhaps a little bit impractical. For example, Fridays off works for Kellogg's. It may well be that some of the businesses will want to spread that out across a week. Um, certainly they'll know what works best for their businesses. As you said, we are in a recession. If you did have a spare Friday afternoon, you might just pass the time over a newspaper in your favourite coffee shop. Or maybe take a walk around and look at some of that magnificent architecture that you normally hurry past on the way to work. Or you could simply find a comfortable spot and sit and watch the world go by. Now the big issue here is will the boss let you do it? Well, I'm going to give it a go. So this is Kevin Duffy taking Friday afternoon off for Channel M. And who can blame him? That's all from me for this morning. I'll be back at 12 noon with the lunchtime news and Andy Crane will have a full roundup of the day's news at five tonight. Now, though, over to Phil and Mike for the sport. Mike, as James has said, is here with the sports. We're going to start off with a potential return for one player to the North West, which could cause some controversy. Well, I'm glad you said that, not me. The lawyers are already on standby. Yesterday we thought um, Joey Barton may be returning to the North West with Sam Allardyce at Blackburn, but this morning we hear Bolton have entered the race to sign the uh, combative midfielder. I think we should leave it at that. So it looks like he's on the way out of Newcastle and he looks like he's coming back to one of his favourite haunts, the North West, which is great news for us all. Um, Can't we've wait. had a couple of managers leave in the last uh, few months, including John Sheridan. He could be lined up for a new job. He could be, and it's rumoured this morning that he's going to take over at Chesterfield over the next couple of days, which will be a good move for Chesterfield. I think he was harshly treated at, uh, at Oldham. Um, he, he was a bit like Brian Clough at Oldham. He, he had certain ideas about the way the club could go forward. I don't think they were shared by certain other people at Oldham, and he was shown the door. So, sad loss, sad loss for Oldham, and I think under him they would have made the playoffs, and they wouldn't have had that ridiculous attempt at um, signing Joe Royal, trying to get them into it. They didn't win one one game in his last, what, nine or ten, did he? So, Sheridan to Chesterfield, that is um, a good rumour. And we've also heard a rumour this morning on the wires that uh, Jim Gannon may not be out of work for too long, could be heading to uh, a football league club based on the coast, let's say. OK. The entertainment capital of the North West. Watch Can't this space. Else. Um, with regards to uh, other stories this morning, Didier Drogba has had his fair share of column inches the last couple of days. He has, and he's always been looking for a way out of Chelsea, and Chelsea have always hummed and hard, you know, do we keep him because he is a bit controversial, but he always scores goals, and that after his Champions League performance the other day, the, the performance after the final whistle, it looks like Chelsea are willing to listen to offers for him, which would probably be a good move for both player and club. The player gets a clean break, and the club can say, listen, I know he's going to be suspended for probably or at least the first three European matches of next season, so we've decided to get rid of him so a clever move by Chelsea and it was still a command um, you know a good um, transfer fee as well okay one of the story could Ricky Hatton have one more fight left in him well we think he will have one more fight we, we thought he was gonna hand pick a, a journeyman to end his career on a win uh, Michael Katsidis the Australian you know really is a hard fight and tremendous uh, boxing warrior he was in talks with Camp Hatton before Hatton lost to Manny Pacwa over the weekend about one fight over here in Manchester we believe that fight is still on the uh, Katsidis obviously wants it to happen uh, Ricky Hatton look, look is looking at that looking at one last payday it could well take place before the, the end of the year at the city of Manchester Stadium maybe one fight too far for Ricky though. Okay. On to cricket. Headline writers everywhere will have been rubbing their hands with glee at the fact that Graham Onions <laughs> did so well for England yesterday. Yeah, he did superb, the young man for England. What a debut. Uh, England played the West Indies. It was day two yesterday. England finished on 3 7 7 all out. Ravi Bopara moving on to 1 4 3. In return, the West Indies only managed to creep up to 1 5 2. And as we've said, that man, Graham Onions, was responsible for that, taking an incredible 5 for 38. At one stage, five wickets fell in 14 balls after tea, four of them to Onions. In the second innings, the West Indies have limped along to 39 for two, still trailing by 186. Play resumes at 11 o'clock, and we expect for the first time in 14 attempts, England to get a test series off with a win. OK. With a fair win, some decent bowling and good weather, Lancashire could wrap up county championship success today. Well, we hope so. The only thing that could stop them, I think, is the rain at the moment. They are doing well against Worcestershire and the results at the moment. Lanks first innings made 3-4-7. Glen Chapel top scoring with 89. Worcester were 1-6-7 all out and in the second innings 1-2-9. For three, so Worcester still trail by 51 runs, seven wickets remaining. Play resumes at 11. I expect that one to be finished by Chris by Christmas by tea time. <laughs> <laughs> the way Christmas we go, maybe Christmas. <laughs> uh, I've worked out I can watch a different playoff game every day now for the next seven days, which is fantastic. <laughs> Last night did see a bit of both Rochdale and Berry. 
Yeah, mixed results really for, for both of our teams. Actually, Berry won 1 0 away from home, but I don't think that, that's as clear cut. It's only half time in that game, really. I don't think that's as clear cut as possible. Rochdale drew 0 0 at home against uh, Gillingham. The boss, Keith Hill, it was more than happy. Well, I'm happy. I'm happy we kept a clean sheet. It was a good display, confidence boosting display. It was a good game. Two competitive sides, two different shapes and formations, two different tactics, but the outcome is. A goal was uh, draw and uh, we're happy with a clean sheet. We're happy to take a clean sheet to uh, Gillingham and we're happy for Gillingham to pro probably and possibly come out at us a little bit more at home and that'll create opportunities for us because we're very good at counter-attacking. Were you surprised at how tight the game was? No, not really. I think there was an indication of that on Saturday. You know, they scored a goal, albeit from one of our set plays. Uh, Curtis Weston run the full length of the pitch and uh, possibly should have got a penalty, but he, he got up to convert the rebound. So uh, it was very tight on Saturday. Not an awful lot gained on Saturday, not an awful lot uh, to be measured by, but it gave us an indication of how tight the game could possibly be. And it was tight tonight, but it was played at a good tempo. There was a lot of good quality on show. And I thought it was a very absorbing and entertaining match and that I was really pleased to be part of it. Yeah, good luck to both Rochdale and Berry at the weekend in the second leg of the playoff semi finals. Just time for some Premier League news. And Wigan is where Steve Bruce is. Wigan face West Brom tomorrow. And you've awarded Steve Bruce the headline of uh, haircut of the day. You're a brave man. But, uh, he stitched me up there. <laughs> I've seen you, a few minutes. Listen to Steve Bruce. He's been moaning his side's lack of goals. If you look at the, you know, the whole season, that's been where Achilles' heel. We've took great pride in our defensive organisation, which we have to be. You know, for a club like ours, but um, we haven't scored enough. And certainly the games against Blackburn, against Bolton in particular last week, if we had took the chances, then we'd have been away, away and running. And uh, that's unfortunate, but there you are. I'm not putting the blame on strikers. It's a team. You defend as a team and you attack as a team. And, you know, the really, really great teams have goals from everywhere. And as a team, we haven't scored enough. Uh, of course, it's a big Manchester derby as well this weekend. But just briefly, there's a bigger game happening this weekend for one team. Yeah, Gloucester North End in the FA Vars final at Wembley. We featured them all the way along on their trip to Wembley. Good luck to them and good luck to uh, Mr Atkinson, the chairman, a good friend of Channel M. So good luck at the weekend. Yeah, all the news from that on Monday. Now time for a break. Coming next, though, 11-year-old Salford girl Paige Phillip joins us for a live preview ahead of her appearance on BBC One's Tonight's The Night tomorrow night. We'll see you in a couple of minutes' time.